the promise rest change from glory take away open to sin and have an omega be and of faith as is beginning set all hearts at liberty Come, Almighty, to deliver, let us all thy grace receive. Suddenly return and never, never more thy temple leave. Thee we would be always blessing. Serve thee as thy host above. Pray and praise thee with our ceasing glory in thy perfect love. Finish then thy new creation, pure and spotless let us be. Let us see thy great salvation perfectly restored in thee. Change from glory into glory till in heaven we take our place till we cast our crowns before the lost in wonder, love, and praise. And then we'll continue with hymn 79, hymn 79. And we'll be doing it a cappella, right, Richie, again? Right, we'll be singing a cappella. So just blend the voices, the alto, I want to hear Sister Amoy and Sister Ward, right, and then like them, Beverly and, right, so let's just blend the voices so we can get that, that harmony coming through. Oh, love of God, uh, so throng and true, eternal and yet ever new. After the conch of two, one, two, O oh, love of God, how strong and true, eternal and yet ever new, uncomprehended and unbought, beyond all knowledge and all cause. O oh, love of God, how deep and great, far deeper than man's deepest head, self as of God, the light, the light, changeless eternal in a full night. We read the blessing him who came to bear for us the cross of shame, sent by the Father from on high, all I to live or death to die. We read thy poor to bless and save, even the darkness of the grave, still more in resurrection light. We read thy fullness of thy might. O love of God, or shield and steel, through all the perils of 
away. Eternal love and thee wear us forever seed, forever blessed. Lovely. And we'll continue our singing with the hymn 281 to Okay, we have the accompaniment now of, of the music, 281. I gave my life for thee, my precious blemish, that thou my ransom be, and quicken from the dead. I still want to hear those, I still want to hear those sparks, right? Sister Mooring and Sister Amoy. Right, let's let's not all sing in soprano, right? I give my life for thee, my precious blood I shed, that thou my ransom be. And quicken from the dead. I give, I give my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? I give, I give my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? My father's house of life. My glory circle throne, I left for earthly night, for wandering sad and lone. I left, I left it all for thee, hast thou left all for me? I left, I left it all for thee, hast thou left all for I suffered much for thee, more than thy tongue can tell. Of bitterest agony to rescue thee from hell. I've borne, I've borne it all for thee. What hast thou borne for me? I've borne, I've borne it. What hast thou borne for me? I thank you. We're we'll going to our, our theme song now at this moment. We stand with singing of the hymn 213. Two. 113. Now let it rain. Jesus is coming again. Cheer up, pilgrims. Be joyful and sing. Jesus is coming again. Amen. 
Good night, everyone. A scripture reading will be taken from John 3.16. John 3.16. And it reads, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Let's prepare for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you, Lord, for bringing us here another night. Father, I pray that if I may sin or anything that I have known of, I pray that you will clean me, that these words that I say will come not from me, but from you. Father, I pray that you will continue to guide us. Let your Holy Spirit come among us tonight, Lord. Father, I pray that you will bring the visitors safely, that they too will come to hear more of your word. Father, as shall we present the word tonight i pray that you will continue to give her the option to function lord put your words in her heart and let people see you shining through her life so that they will come to know you as a personal savior lord and that they will want to as they see us going out lord they will want to be like us they will want to know who we are who we really are and will want to come to know you as their personal savior. Lord, I pray that you will continue to bless us, Lord. Continue to guard and protect each and every one of us, Lord. And Father, as you come, our call, that we will see you as a smiling savior and not as a founding judge. And all those who that we have invited also to this crusade, Lord, I pray that they too will turn their hearts to you, Lord, and they will come to know you also, as a personal savior, continue to protect us and continue to be with the proceedings to make this my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Good night, good night, good night. I want to welcome all of you to Marvelous Monday Night. What did I say? Marvelous Monday Night. Christ for the Crisis Lay Evangelistic Series. To those on Zoom, welcome. 
Someone on Zoom, please unmute and let me know that you are hearing me at this time. Hearing you loud and clear. Loud and clear, my sister. Thank you so much. Berea is on Zoom. Welcome, Berea. I trust that you would have had a wonderful day today. Um, I know that it was a holiday, correct? And most persons would have been relaxing. I forget that I didn't want to say laying up. So I say relaxing and having a good time, right? By the Paul, to our visiting friends, welcome to the Sugar Hill Christ for the Crisis Crusade. Here in the house, we have Sister. Well, I almost said Sister Wood. Antoinette, how are you doing? We have at me. She was here last night and she's back again with us tonight. I trust that you're still last night. It was a wonderful one. And I know tonight will be just as good and it can only get better from here. Brother Paul, Elder Paul, welcome. And your lovely wife seated right beside you in Jesus' name. All right. So you don't have to ask Paul, where is? We can see she is right there. To those on Zoom, any person on Zoom, you're not a member of Sugar Hill or a Seventh-day Adventist, I would like to kindly unmute and tell me your name at this time. Don't be shy. You're not a member of my church or a, Sugar, or a Seventh-day Adventist. Just give me your name at this time. You're shy. Hey. All right. This welcome, though. Um, look yourself in your mirror and say, welcome. Anybody remember the subject for tonight? When? When love reaches out, Sister Maureen, uh, if I had a gift, a wonderful gift, I would have given it to you for that. When love reaches out, and you must hear the subject tonight. Tomorrow night, thrilling Tuesday night, the subject is broken and fixed. What did I say? Broken and fixed. What is broken and what is fixed? You must be here tomorrow night to hear that subject. Thrilling Tuesday night. Brother Jeffrey, Hi. we have a visitor on. Her name is Sister Paula Brewster. Paula Brewster. Paula Brewster. Yes, please. Paula, welcome to the Christ for the Crisis Crusade. I, want, I wish I could see you, Paula. You know, with a name like Paula, you must be beautiful. So welcome, Paula. I trust, I would like to know who invited you to Paula. You could care to give us the person who invited you to this crusade or how you heard about us. Oh, I think that the Zoom, the persons on Zoom may not have been able to unmute. That's good. Yeah. But if you can type in the chat, my sister, Paula, you can indicate to us who gave you the invitation or how you were able to hear about us at this point in time. Sister Sherry Ann Watkins invited oh, her. Sherry Ann Watkins. Okay, oh, preacher for tonight. Okay, welcome, Paula. I trust that you will have a wonderful time with us at this point in time. We have another visitor. Uh huh. Brother, we have a Peter D. And we have a Jerry Broom. Jerry Brook. Jerry Broom. Oh, Jerry Broom. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Welcome, Jerry. Welcome, Peter. Peter and Jerry, welcome to Christ for the Crisis Lay Evangelistic Series. And I really would like to get in touch with your individuals, Paula, Peter, and Jerry, because I have something wonderful for you. So I will pass on your gift to the individual who would have given you the invitation to this particular series. So you will not be leaving us empty handed. All right, Paula and Jerry and Peter. So. Persons who need to unmute, you cannot unmute. I did not get Jacqueline Kelman. 
Jacqueline Kelman. Yes, please. Welcome, yes, please. Jacqueline. Welcome, Jacqueline. Welcome, I, your, your yes, please. I'm so young and sprightly, Jacqueline. It's nice to have you with us worshiping tonight. I trust that you will enjoy. Thank you. Good night. You're welcome, my sister. You. You're welcome. You're welcome. Good night to all. Good night to all. Bentley Griffith here. Oh, Brother Bentley, Elder Bentley, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Interesting. <laughs> all right. Do you have a Maria Beth for England? Amelia O'Neill. We have, we have a Marlene Wright as well. Who Maria and Marlene, Marlene, welcome to Sugar Hills Lay Evangelistic Series. Marlene, all right. help, please. Help, please go. Amelia O'Neill. Okay. All right, so welcome, Marlene. Welcome, Maria. I trust that you will enjoy your time with us tonight. So I have your gifts written, so I will pass your gifts on to your contacts, all right? So that's Peter, Jerry, Maria, Marlene. You will not be going home empty-handed after we finish up tonight. So have a good night, everybody, and I will see you a little bit later. Dorian Thorne. Amelia O'Neill, invited by Miss Sister Town. Sister Town. You said your first name was Amelia O'Neill. Amelia. Wow. Yes, please. Welcome, Amelia. You sound so Thank wonderful. You. Thorne. Uh, 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 look at that now. And Mr. Dorian Thorne. Welcome. I trust that you will enjoy your time with us. Invited Mr. by Thorne, Elsie Thorne. Want to tell me who invited you, Mr. Thorne? Elsie Thorne. Elsie Thorne. Uh, Elsie, wait, 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 wait. This is for, for tonight, Elsie. All right. Stevenson, she has, I'll strip you for, the, for that, uh, for the price coming up. All right. I have to take my note. Elsie four, Stevenson two. Bula. Beulah Husbands, if you're hearing us, welcome. Okay, so LC4, Stevenson 3, and we're going wonderful. So everybody have a good night, in Jesus' name, and God bless. Good night to all. Tonight, I have Nugget. I am going to be talking about the modern friend in children. And you would understand as I go ahead. Children today are getting faster, faster than in former years. And we wonder why. Statistics have shown that more than 10% of the world's children are overweight, and the rise is over 30% in the industrialized countries. Worldwide, more than 17 million children under the age of five are overweight. And if we look at the United States, the number of super fat children have tripled in the last 20 years. Years ago, that would have been hard to believe or imagine because the children were always playing and exercising. <laughs> but now, in this developed society, physical fitness is a trend more common in the adults than in the children. It is the adults who we see out there running and jogging and walking. There are the ones who will go to the uh, wellness lectures and examine the menus in restaurants for healthier food options. While some adults are seeking to live and eat healthier, 
where are the children and what are they doing? We are very much aware that genes play a role in the person's way, but genes is not the whole answer. The environment plays a critical important role as we have seen over the last 30 or so years. With a steady increase in the obese society, this society seems to support obesity because instead of children playing outdoors, they are indoor with television, internet, mobile phones, and other gadget distractions. These distractions are keeping them less physically active, hence the current trend of obesity. Furthermore, as we look at the statistics, it has indicated that about 80% of the overweight children will remain overweight into adult. And this is of grave concern. This mark the increase in children and adolescent obesity will have serious consequences in the future. And dieting is not the full answer. Being overweight predisposes a child to heart disease, gallstone, adult onset diabetes, hypertension, cancer, and full-blown obesity late in life, plus a host of other complications. They develop more orthopedic problems and upper respiratory problem, diseases. And this is only one side of the story. They often suffer major social and psychological problems. The major cause of obesity in children is the same as for adults, a sedentary lifestyle, watching TV, snacking, and the frequent use of carbonated drinks, as well as the popularity and availability of the highly processed and concentrated foods. Proper eating and lifestyle habits should be of interest to the family. And the young children need the support of the family because even if the rest of the family is not overweight, everyone will benefit from a healthier life, way of life. So what can be done about this growing problem? Here are some suggestions. Obesity in children could be prevented if children were taught the following sensible basic habits early before they gain free access to food and become addicted to TV, computer, the internet, and all the other gadgets. So we need to prepare three meals a day at regular times with a lot of whole grain, legumes, fresh fruits, and vegetables. We need to control the cupboard, get rid of all the junk food, offer fresh fruits and vegetables for a snack. Encourage them to drink plenty of water. Limit the carbonated drinks, the juices, and the other beverages. Ensure they get at least an hour of active exercise daily, preferably out outdoors. They need plenty of rest because many children are chronically tired. You need to put them to bed early so that they get enough sleep and they can wait naturally in time for a proper breakfast. Facilitate a wide range of interests. Reading, sports, music lessons, arts and crafts, family outing, etc. Remember, children learn by example and parents therefore need to commit themselves to being better role models. They need to be purposeful in their effort to take control of their children and if they truly love and care for them, they will seek to be instrumental in, in preserving a long and healthy life by being their overseers, being their watchmen on the wall of Zion. And there's a lot more that can be said, but this is a five minute health nugget. So thank you very much for listening.
I want to thank our sister for that how feature, all right? Tonight will be the first night for our quiz. And you can expect this every night going forward. We will be quizzing on what was presented last night or the previous night. So there are five questions. Um, there are some quiz cards. Every individual who's wishing to participate, could you just raise your hand so that you can receive a card from those lovely ladies in the porch. All right. And raise your hand, take a card, take a card. If not, I will be forced to come and give you one myself. <laughs> All right. All right, there's nothing to intimidate you. There are five easy questions. And they're all true or false, all right? And at the end of this series, there will be a prize for the individual who outstrip everybody else in this quiz. So I'll be taking note. I'll be collating all of the information and the results so that at the end, we can give a true picture as to who did well, all right? I'm gonna work out how by tomorrow night, we can allow those on Zoom to participate in this quiz as well, all right? There's a feature that we can you know, implement that it can be done, but we'll see how best we can do that from tomorrow night. So everybody has a card and a pencil or pen all right. Let's... Okay. Like I said, five easy questions. You know, nothing too difficult that would make you tax your brain. Okay. Question number one The Bible is God's instruction manual. True or false? The Bible is God's instruction manual, true or false? Question number two. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, true or false? False. Question number three. The Bible contains 67 books and two testaments. The Bible contains 67 books and two testaments. True or false? Question number four. The Bible's original language was not English. The Bible's original language was not English. And question number five, human beings wrote the Bible, but the ultimate author is the Holy Spirit. Human beings wrote the Bible, but the ultimate author is the Holy Spirit. True or false? All right, you see, they were quite, quite easy. Five questions. So I trust that you have true, true, or true, or false, false on those papers. I will collect them later so that we can look at them. And tomorrow night, you will have the information and the answers to those questions. Enjoy the rest of the night. ladies and gentlemen it's good to be here at the house of the lord and in the sanctuary and also a blessed good evening to the zoom platform as well 
I hope you're having a wonderful time this evening because I am. My brothers and sisters in Christ, please allow me to introduce to you a wonderful and talented woman of God, our sister Yvette Ford. She will now come and minister to you. And as she brings you this message, I hope that your hearts will be blessed. Good night, everyone. Song I'm going to sing is called The All Real Praise. It's taken for him on number 178. Okay. Once, oh blessed Christ, a beauty was veiled off in human views, but true suffering, death, and sorrow. He has rent the veil in two. Oh, behold a man of sorrow. Oh, behold him in plain view. Lo, he is the mighty conqueror. Since he rent the veil in two. Lo, he is the mighty conqueror, since he rent the veil in two. Yes, he is the God, yes, he is with God the Father, interceding there for you. For he is the well beloved, since he ran the veil in two. Oh, behold a man of sorrows. Oh, behold him in plain view. Lo, he is the mighty conqueror. Since he ran the veil in two, lo, he is the mighty conqueror. Since he ran the veil in two, holy angels bow before him, men of earth give praises to. For he is the mighty conqueror, since he ran the veil in two. Oh, behold the man of sorrows, oh, behold him in plain view. Lo, he is the mighty conqueror, since he ran the veil in two. Lo, he is the mighty conqueror. Says he ran the veil in two. Oh, behold the man of sorrows. Oh, behold him in plain view. The mighty conqueror, since he ran the veil in two. Lo, he is the mighty conqueror, since he ran the veil in two.
Good night, everyone. Just want to thank Sister Yvette for that lovely song as usual. Keep on singing for the Lord, Yvette. My task tonight is to pray for the offering. The two boxes here in the corner as we exit and place the offerings in. Let us bow our heads now for prayer. Almighty and most gracious Father, we just want to give you thanks and praise for giving us the opportunity to be here another night. We thank you, Lord, for your love and your tender mercies towards us. We thank you for providing for us each day, dear Lord. And as we go about tonight's procedure, Lord, we want to thank you for everything that you are doing and have done for us so far. We ask tonight, dear Lord, that you will bless the offering. And as we give, Lord, we pray that it will go forward to further your study. In Jesus' name, my prayer is thanksgiving. Amen. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Good night to those on Zoom. I hope you're enjoying thus far. It is my duty tonight to introduce a special woman. I had to make a few glitches here, because she's so powerful. <laughs> and I mean that from my heart. So it is my great pleasure to introduce a powerful woman of God. She's a mother, she's a sister, she's a daughter, and she's a child of the Most High God. She inspires me. The first time I heard her pray, I said, I needed to sound like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I want to sound just like her. She, last night, Brother Chase, bring down the house, I would say. But tonight, she's going to set fire to the rubbers. Believe you me, when she stand here tonight, you would know. She's not setting it with a match. The Holy Spirit is going to do the firework. So without further ado, I introduce you, Terry Ann Watkins. When she stands up, the devil starts running. He just said, no, no, let, let me go, boys, let me go. Terry is here, no? So she is going to bring down the house with some firework tonight. So before she comes, we will have our team song. So thank you and hope you all enjoy. Stand and we will just have technicians, it's just one verse, right? And okay, we'll just one verse and chorus. So we'll go without we'll go without the compliment of of the music is singing a cappella. So let's go after the conch of after the conch of two, one, two. Lift up the trumpet and loud let it ring. Jesus is coming again. Cheer up, people, Brems, be joyful and sing. Jesus is coming again. Coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. Let's remain standing. And the preacher will just give you advice from here. Just remain standing. Good night, good night. I want to join the others and welcome you to our evangelistic series, Christ for the Crisis. Welcome to those on Zoom and to you on YouTube. The pleasure is mine to be here. Now I'll invite you to have a seat. Thank you.
the song the songwriter says i want to know what love is i want you to show me i want to feel what love is i know you can show me do you know what is love or have you ever heard someone tell you that they did not know what love is well i invite you to listen carefully to me as i tell you about a few persons who had a special kind of love for mankind number 1 mother teresa nun and missionary she spent her entire life tirelessly working for the poor and she had a simple philosophy if you cannot feed a hundred just feed one james harrison is a blood plasma donor from australia he made over 1000 donations since throughout his lifetime and these donations are estimated to have saved over 2 million i said 2 million unborn babies what about maurice ralph hillman develop over 36 vaccines and of eight of those measles mumps hepatitis chicken pox and many other diseases he single handedly prevented the asian flu outbreak as well of 1957 from becoming a repeat of the 1918 spanish flu pandemic which killed 20 million people worldwide but let's bring it home national hero charles duncan o'neil was a medical doctor who dedicated most of his working life to the poor and let's not forget our independence our father of independence errol walton barrow who secured many social changes in barbados but church these are names of individuals who have been recognized for their good and have left their mark in history's pages however my friends and family tonight i stand not to give you a history lesson of persons who have touched the lives of this world but to remind you that there is one numero uno non on that stands out that stands apart from all other names i declare there is no other name no other person than that of jesus the most famous of all names known in history brethren it is one thing to have heard of jesus but it is another to have experienced his goodness can i get a amen tonight i am here to introduce you to the jesus of history the jesus of the bible that you heard about last night there are many questions about this man that leads to discussions amongst mankind was jesus who people say he was was he just a prophet was he just a good man or a moral teacher was jesus any different than any religious leader or was he the divine son of god beloved these queries are nothing new under the sun for i had these same questions 
until I had my encounter with Jesus. I was contemplating taking my own life. I had lost my grandmother months after giving birth to my daughter. Then my little cuz was murdered and persons were fighting over whose jurisdiction it was. My grandfather died probably from a broken heart because I did not get to Spain or to visit as often as I would have loved to. And certainly, I blamed myself for his death. But I thought, I said I thought I had someone to lean on through it all. I thought I had someone that would help me through the hardships. But little did I know that he was on his way out as well. As my life partner and my confidant, my relationship, brethren, was already strained with my mom. I did not know Jesus, but I knew of him. Sure enough, I believe I could bear no more. The weight of my burdens was too heavy for me. And so I was on the verge of calling it quits. But something, I said something or someone kept bringing my two kids before me. As I cried and I cussed and I quarreled about all that I was facing. Then one day, as I drove speedily along the road, I picked up a slide and ran off the road to the opposite side around a corner. When the vehicle came to a stop, I realized that I was still alive and had avoided colliding with a vehicle which was coming up the hill around the corner. My friends, I recognized that it was the hand of God yes. who shielded me that day. That's it right, was then right. I noticed that he who was consumed by love, whose very name represents love, reached out to me. Amen. Did I acknowledge him right away? No, my friends. I was too busy, consumed by all the deaths and the broken relationship I was dealing with. Believe it or not, things got worse. My mom took very ill. Though our relationship was strained, she was all I had to depend on. And as I watched her dwindle from this beautiful, healthy lady to one who was consumed by sickness to feebleness, I was sure she would die soon. And so I want to say love reached out to me and I was led to my bedside with an urge to do that which I had never done on my own. I found myself on my knees calling upon the name above all names, asking to save my mom and not to take her from me, yeah. declaring I, Sherry, could take no more deaths. I could handle no more heartbreaks. I cried my eyes out and in my own clueless way, I reasoned with Jesus, I said. I reasoned with him and again, love reached out to me. My mm. mom's life was spared. Though great by the stresses of life, it has been six years, I said. Six years since my reasoning with God that she is here with me and I want to praise God. Yes, that's it, my sister. God is good. Tonight, my sermon is entitled, When Love Reaches Out. Oh, yeah. Let us pray. Loving Father, God Almighty, Omnipotent, Omnipresent, God, Lord, you are worthy of all the praise tonight. And tonight, Lord, as I stand here, Lord, thanking you for the message that you have laid upon my heart and for the 
talk patterns, dear God, that you have provided. Father God, I ask, Lord, that you empty me of self. Empty all of us here, Lord, in the church, on Zoom, and on YouTube. Lord, that your Holy Spirit may speak to us. That as your word is delivered, Lord, it may be received, Lord, with a thankful heart. That hearts, Lord, may be changed, Lord. And that we, Lord, may come to understand a love that is beyond comparison. That we will yield ourselves, Father God, to your will. I thank you for hearing, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen, amen. Tonight, my friends, sisters and brothers, I have some fleeting questions. Bear with me. Are you happy in this modern world? Are you feeling overwhelmed and searching for something or someone to bring relief? Are you tired of feeling destitute and longing for a better life? Are you trying to fill that void in your life with sex, contraband, or alcohol? And yet, after the numbing effect is gone, the void is still there. Mm. I have tried this. It remains the same. Mm. So many questions on your minds and hardly any answers. Right? Day by day, you, me, we are faced with another challenge, sometimes greater than the one you faced, we, me, faced before. What about those of us who frequent social media? What anxieties have social media created for you? And have you thinking, how will you survive in this world? My friends and family, the question on many of our thoughts is what next? How will I cope with what the future holds in store? Is there any way I can escape this dark, dark world full of hatred and pain? I assure you, each of us are faced with some overwhelming situation today, whether it be sickness, whether it be joblessness, whether it be divorce, whether it be with our children, we are faced with some crisis. And we are wondering if anyone cares. Tonight, I declare there is hope. Amen. Someone is That's reaching it. out. Someone yeah. oh, wants yes. to give you hope for a brighter tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Someone wishes to change your mindset from one of negativity, I say, to one of positivity. Oh. Someone wants to fill that void in your life. That's Someone That's wants right. to give you strength to overcome the difficulties. Someone can deliver you, I dare say. Someone can deliver you and direct your path that you may not stay down, but you may rise as one who has been promised the victory. Amen. My friends, the songwriter says, I can't take a heart that is broken and make it over again. But I know a man who can. I can't take a soul that is sin sick and make it whiter than snow. But I know a man who can. My friends, it goes on to say, some called him savior, mm -mm, the redeemer of men. But I, Sister Sherry, call him Jesus, yes. for he's my dearest That's friend. It. Tonight I declare Jesus, the very essence of love, is reaching out to you. Amen. How is he the very essence of love? Mm -hmm. Many years ago, when Adam and Eve sinned, a plan of salvation yes. or a plan to save mankind mm -hmm. had been put in place. That's it. Now the word says the wages of sin was death. Mm -hmm. But love reached out to mankind Amen. 
And we see this in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. I hope you have your notepads and you have your pencils. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. And it says, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his heel. Here love begins to reach out. Because of man's disobedience, someone had to step up to the plate, had to step in and replace us by giving his life for mine, his life for yours, mm -hmm. his life for all of us. Mm. In other words, he had to buy us back. That's right. That's it. Despite our disobedience, love is reaching out to you, wayward child. Love is reaching out to you, prostitute, to you, drunkard, to you, womanizer. Love is reaching out to you, my rude child, you revengeful co-worker, you hard-hearted churchgoer. Love is reaching out. Mm, yes. The effect of disobedience is seen in our society today. That's right. Through how siblings relate to each other by using cutlasses and knives. How neighbors relate by plotting and executing a neighbor over land. But I declare when love reaches out, there is hope forevermore. The Bible says in John 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If this is not love, my friends, then I don't know what love is. Father said, son, only you can save them. Only you can buy back their filthy lives. Only you can save Margaret. Only you can save Sister Janice from her lies. Or Brother Sobers from his cheating ways. Only you can save Shem from his homosexual lifestyle. Or Sherry from her child abusive ways. Only you can save Sherry from her sexual immoralities. And the son said, sure, dad. I know you love them too much and I love them too. I will. I got this. I got them yes, covered. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Jesus says love, my friends, and he reached out, is reaching out and will reach out to all mankind. This love is not static or self-centered. It reaches out and it draws all in. Mm -hmm. When love reaches out, it sets the true pattern of love. The basis of all relationships. Listen carefully. When you love someone dearly, you are willing to give freely. That's right. To the point of self-sacrifice. Right. Many of us as parents would have said, we will lay our lives down to protect our children and we still feel that way today. So imagine how our Savior Jesus Christ felt when he submitted to his father's wishes to lay his life down. He felt a far greater love for each of us than you or I can ever feel in our lifetime. And so without coercion, without being forced, and without being bribed, love reached out to Amen. mankind. Amen. Why did love reach out? Because that was his very nature. Mm -hmm. Jesus' very nature is love and will be to show acts 
of love towards mankind. I want you on Zoom and on YouTube to type in the chat, how do you spell love? First John 4, 7 to 10 says, take your notes, first John 7, first John 4, 7 to 10 says that Jesus is love. Beloved, let us love one another for love is who? Love is God. And everyone that loveth is born of who? Born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is what? Love. In this was manifested the love of God towards us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. That's right. Once again, we see the theme of love coming out. Mm -hmm. And that love, I said, is not static. It is action packed. Tonight... I introduce you to love, Jesus of history, Jesus who is the theme of the Bible that you may see when love reaches out what it looks like and of whom it comes from. Mm -hmm. Go with me to the Bible again, to John 1 verses 1 to 3. John 1 verses 1 to 3. That we may address the questions of, was Jesus who person say he was or is? Is he really the son of God? And is he really the savior? And it reads, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. It says in the beginning, the word was with God. And the word was God. So what is the word referencing here? Note that the term, the word, was used by theologians and philosophers, both Greek and Hebrew, in several different ways. In Hebrew scripture, the word was an agent of creation. As we see in Psalm 33, verse 6, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. Hosea 1, verse 2. Hosea 1, verse 2 used the term, the word, to represent the source of God's message to his people, and it reads, the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, Go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms, for the land have committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. Psalm 119 verse 11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Yes, my sister. Suggests that it's God's law or his standard for holiness. I declare that John reveals that love reaching out when Jesus became fully human and yet was fully God. Amen. And that what Jesus taught and what he did are tied inseparably to who he is. Amen. Though Jesus took on humanity and lived as a man, he never ceased to be eternal God, who has always existed, the creator and sustainer of all things and the source of eternal life. Solid point. This text encompasses the very 
in reality of when love reached out to you and I and is reaching out today to you drug pusher to you illegal gun dealer love is reaching out and John's account is accurate because not only was he one of Jesus's disciples but he was an eyewitness and if you tonight are not convinced go to verse 14 of John 1 which says and the word was made flesh mm. and dwell oh, amongst yeah. us and yeah. we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth amen here was seen the term the word being used again but it is made plainer that the word became flesh yes. meaning yes. it became human yes. jesus yes. became human that's huh? it. That's it. he was the perfect expression mm -hmm. of god the father in human form Amen. and jesus when he was baptized went up straight away out of the water and lo the heavens were open unto him and he saw the spirit of god descending like a dove and lighting upon him and lo a voice from heaven seen this, this is my beloved I son know. in whom i am well pleased jesus was the son of God. Yes. A long time ago, friends, before Jesus' miraculous birth to Mary in the Old Testament, Isaiah, a prophet, prophesied, seen. This is in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. Now, Emmanuel means God, God with, with us. us. Mm -hmm. And Joseph also went up from Galilee and out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his ex-spouse wife, being great with child. In other words, church, Joseph taught Mary who was big pregnant or big with child, as we were saying in Beige and Parklands, or was about to drop calf. And it goes on to say that while she was there, the days that she should have child was accomplished. All that is seen, my friends, is that Mary's pregnancy had come to term. She was ready to deliver. Now, why was it necessary for Jesus to be born? And in the circumstances that were predicted? Because when Adam and Eve sinned, a crisis had erupted. A sin crisis, in other words, sin being the transgression of the divine law had occurred. God saw that in the days of Noah, the earth would be wicked continually. He saw down through the line that in 2022, and children will be disobedient. Aren't we seeing that today? He saw that people will be murdered even more. He saw that there will be active gun violence. He saw that my cousin will be murdered. And that his perpetrator will be murdered in different circumstances. He saw that boys and girls will be sexually molested, sexually assaulted, because sin is loved by God. And he loves mankind so much that his love reached out to mankind through his son, Jesus, for the sin crisis that we face today. Beloved, a plan was made to save you. A plan was made to save me. A plan was made to save your ancestors before they died and your unborn grandchild. A plan was made to save the human race. This plan called for love. Jesus, the son of God, 
to come to earth, live a perfect life, and die in our place for our sins. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. But what? The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Romans 3, verse 23 says, For all that sin and come short of the glory of God. Mm. Not just some. I said all have sinned. Friends, I am guilty. You are guilty. We are guilty. Your deceased relative was guilty. And all of us, I said, all of us needed a savior. Jesus was and is the savior. When love reached out through the plan, Jesus came to demonstrate love in action. This plan is called the plan of salvation. But the plan of salvation cannot, I say it cannot save us unless we recognize and accept it as it is captured in our popular text, John 3, 16. verse 16. Yes. The well, plan of salvation was and is complete in Jesus we can benefit from it when we accept it. That's it. It is a gift and available to every man, every woman, every boy and girl. This love is reaching out to all mankind. I beg you tonight, let us not reject it. So when love reached out through this plan, what or how did it really reach out? My friends, my sisters, and my brothers, Jesus lived with his father before the creation of this world. He knows everything about his father and the beauty of heaven. And he came to earth to tell us about his father's love for us. He alone, I say, Jesus alone knows how much his father loves you and I. And okay. I declare that no one else, no one else could right. demonstrate the father's right. love That's for it. us. But Jesus, amen. That is such an awesome truth mm -hmm. to accept and cherish. Oh, yes. Will you accept love reaching out to you today? Luke chapter 8, verse 43 to 48 shows us that love reached out to the sick. Mm -hmm. This woman had a condition, an issue of blood for 38 years and she touched the hem of the master garment and she was healed and Jesus felt virtue leave him and he stopped and asked who touched him even though he was in a crowd Bro. of people yeah. this Personal was the though. essence of love that reached out when the woman came forward and confessed it was her, Jesus simply told her, her faith has healed her, go in peace. Could you imagine if it was you or me, if she had touched her hand, we would want to slap her for even daring <laughs> to lay her hands on our clothes. When love reached out, it catered to both genders, all classes, I say, to mm -hmm. all ages, the healthy and the sick, the well and the well-to-do, uh. the, the poor and the rich, the single and the wedded or the widowed. Mm -hmm. Love, my friends, is reaching out today, still to these persons, to the minister 
leaders, to the homeless man, to the uneducated and the educated, to the jobless and to the working, to the stressed, to the abused, the victims of crime and their perpetrators. Mm -hmm. Love is reaching out to the incarcerated, to the free man. Yes, Love is it. reaching right. out, my friends. Love is reaching out to all. No Will you accept him? Mm -hmm. Amen. I declare that being born and living as man was not enough for Jesus. He went even further. Love reached out even further, I say. It reached out. I said it reached out beyond comparison to anything mm. we can conjure up or would really be willing to do. Love, I said love gave his life for ours. Jesus knew that the persons he would create would sin against That's him. Right. Yes, he, he knew. knew that he Junior knew. would be a thief. He yeah. knew that Marcus would worship his vehicle or his money. He knew that Aline would covet Ramon's wife in the next five years. He knew that I would have fornicated. He knew that someone would be confused with the truth and would yes. choose to be gay. He knew that Paul would not be able to cope he with knew. the way of the world he and knew. would resort to the alcohol mm -hmm. bottle to numb his thoughts. He knew that peer pressure will be real in 2022 and that bullying will be prevalent in our society. He knew that many will be lovers of partying and liming and socializing than of him. Yet, yet he saved it. his that's life it. for yours. Yet. He knew yes, that when sister. they sinned, he would die yes. for them. That's it. That's it. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, but he, but he was pierced for mm. our transgressions. Yes. He was crushed for mm. our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Mm -hmm. I declare that love, love reached out when though knowing the outcome, he dies anyway. Friends, Jesus was hanging on the cruel oh, cross, yes, yes. lacerated from mm -hmm. beatings, nails in his hands and feet, a crown of thorns on his head. He could have with one word commanded the angels of heaven to deliver him, mm -hmm. but he did not. He could have saved himself, but he couldn't save himself and us too. That's right. The Son of God consented to hang on the cross and give himself for our salvation. Amen. <laughs> consented. Amen. Why did he do it? He did it because he loves us. Praise the Lord today, saints. Praise the Lord today, my friends. Jesus is the Savior of the world. Amen. Jesus pardons. Jesus forgives. Jesus delivers from guilt. Jesus teaches us how to live. Jesus' life is an example for us. Jesus empowers our life. Jesus changes us from the inside out. Jesus gives us a new life. Amen. Amen. Church, when love, when love reaches out, you ought not to reject it anymore. For we are but in the closing scenes of earth's history. Yes. And as I conclude, I leave you with a story. During one of Sir Ernest Shackleton's attempts to cross the Antarctic Ocean in 1914, his ship, the Endurance, was crushed in an ice floe. The crew drifted for days until they could make a landing on Elephant Island. 
Shackleton had the men set up a camp there where they could preserve their supplies and try to survive the coming winter. Imagine that. But he soon realized, friends, <laughs> that no one, no one would come. No one was coming to rescue them. No one had an idea where they were. They were cut off from the world by the freezing, stormy Antarctic Ocean. There was only one hope of a rescue. Someone had to cross that hostile ocean and get help. Shackleton began to rig a 20-foot whaling boat for the voyage. From the volunteers, he picked a crew of six. They would have to cross 800 miles of tempestuous sea in order to reach a Norwegian whaling station on the frozen island of South Georgia. It seemed an impossible task. Could you imagine us having to make that trek? For Shackleton and his men, it seemed an impossible task. In an open boat at that, at the stormiest time of the year. But Shackleton nonetheless set out with his men. For days they huddled under a makeshift canvas covering, keeping the bow turned into the fiercest waves, praying that the wind wouldn't tear their small sail away. They endured bone chilling cold, sleeping bags frozen stiff, icy water streaming down their backs, hunger. And thirst. 14 days after their voyage began, they spotted the black cliffs of South Georgia. Praise God. Shackleton had made it through. Soon a ship would be on its way to rescue the rest of his stranded men. Huh? When Jesus, I said, when Jesus looked down yeah. at our predicament, when oh, Jesus yeah. looked down and saw us suffering, mm. when he saw that we were financially challenged, when he saw that we had health issues, when he saw that we were troubling with our education, when he saw that our children was giving us trouble when he saw the murders in our lands and the gun violence in our aunt in our lands and he saw that we couldn't get along with one another i dare to see he, he took on him the, himself the murderous icy vastness of the evil humankind jesus it, took it on there is it. no one else in the universe like jesus oh, he is the yeah. only one who can save us he is the only one who can take away our guilt and change our lives he is the only one who can offer us eternal life Amen. when jesus saw us in our predicament yes. love i said love yeah. reached out to save us Amen. Whenever we are plunged it, into a crisis, whether physical mm -hmm. or spiritual, the love of Jesus reaches out to save us. Amen. Love is reaching out, my friend. Hallelujah. It is reaching out. Love is reaching out to you, victims of sexual assault. Love is reaching out to you, children. Less family. Love is reaching out to you, broken hearted sire, broken hearted ma'am. Love is reaching out to you, persons of depression. Love is reaching out to you who have lost your loved ones. Love is reaching out to you, overlooked co worker. Love is reaching out to you. My bully, love is reaching out to you, murderer, to you, back 
Fighter. To you, Judas. To you, love is reaching out to you, wayward child. To you, orphan, love is reaching out tonight. If you want to know more about love himself, I invite you here at the church to wave your hand. And to you on Zoom and YouTube, type in the chat, wave. If you want him to be your friend, I invite you on YouTube and Zoom in your homes and here at the church, stand to your feet. And finally, if you want to have a relationship with him, I invite you to bow your heads wherever you are as I pray. And I ask you to say, Lord Jesus, take me as I am, filthy as I am. I need you to be a part of my life. Most gracious and loving Father, God Almighty, the great I am that I am. Father God, tonight I thank you, Lord, for the message from on high. I thank you, Father Lord, for it piercing, Lord, our hearts. I pray, Father God, that it would do, Lord, what you said it would do. Cut and heal. Oh, I yes. pray, Father Lord, that hearts, Lord, have been surrendered oh. to you. Father Lord, you know those who are standing. You know the troubles, Lord, that they face. You know the burdens that are upon their heart. But Lord, you said you are the greatest burden bearer. You said cast our cares upon you, Lord. You are reaching out love to us today. You want to take our burdens. Right. So, Father, we are laying them at your feet. Mm -hmm. We're asking you, Father, to Take all, take them off of us, Lord, and change us, Lord, from the Amen. inside out. Amen. You laid your life down for ours, Lord, Amen. and we say thank you. We are nothing without you. And so, Father, where we have failed, Lord, to acknowledge you, Father, we say sorry. We ask, Lord, yes, that you would have it. mercy upon us, oh, that you yes, won't Lord. give up upon us, Lord, and that you will continue, Lord, to reach out to us, Lord, that we may feel your presence, that we may hear you speaking to us, Lord, that we may make haste, Father God, and surrender into your hands. Amen. Father, bless every individual, Lord, oh, who yes. heard this message. Oh, yes. Yeah. Father, may you continue, Lord, to strengthen them. Mm -hmm. Cover them, Father, Lord. Raise them up, Father God, that they may come to know you as Lord and Savior. Amen. I pray, Father, Lord, that you, as you empower them, as you provide for them, as you heal them, Lord, they will call upon the name of all names. Because there's no name like the name of Jesus. Amen. It heals. Amen. It delivers. It sustains. Amen. It provides. It magnifies. It lifts up. Father, Lord, I pray, Lord, that they will call upon your name. And you, Father God, would hear them and answer. Amen. So, Lord, we thank you and we praise you in no other name than Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 Were you blessed, saints? If you were amen. blessed, Hallelujah. type in the chat. Amen. Amen. It is my prayer that you would continue to have a blessed night. But I look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow night for another powerful message from on high. God bless you all.
Okay, we have our, our theme song after which our closing prayer. And Jesus' love is reaching out to us to the extent that he promised that he will return again because of his love. Because of his love, he don't want to be eternally separated from us. He's promised he would come again. And that's why we will sing our, our theme song. Lift up the trumpet and loud let it ring. The gospel have been proclaimed in, in certain decibels tonight from the throne. And it's indeed clear that the trumpet have been sung. All right, so let's all stand. Still listening for the alto, the tenor, and the bass, all right? So let's go there. Lift up the trumpet and loud let it ring. Jesus is coming again. Cheer up, ye pilgrims, be joyful and sing. Jesus is coming again. Coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. Echo it, hilltops, proclaim it, he plains. Jesus is coming again. Coming in glory, the Lamb that was slain. Jesus is coming again. Coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. Hey, verse of earth, tell the vast one thing wrong. Jesus is coming again. Tempest and whirlwinds, the anthem prolong. Jesus is coming again. Coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. Nations are angry, by this we do know. Jesus is coming again. Knowledge increases, men run to and fro. Jesus is coming again. Coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. Let us pray, Father in heaven, so much we want to thank you for what has been an inspiring and a wonderful message from your servant. We thank you tonight, Lord, that you have inspired, inspired her through the presence of your Holy Spirit. Father, we have felt the workings of the Spirit in this place tonight. And Father, we ask that every single person, those of us that have joined us on Zoom, those that have joined us on YouTube, all our friends, we pray tonight, dear Lord, that the love of Jesus that was spoken of tonight will touch them, dear Father, and that they will come to know you as Lord and Savior before it is too late. So, Father, continue to be with us. Continue to be with these services. And, Father, most of all, may your name be continually lifted up and that men and women, boys and girls, will see you on high. In Jesus' precious name, may the church say, Amen and Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, 